Welcome back to the Breaker Bros, and we have a special guest, Norman, tonight. And uh, this episode is going to be about the college realignment. I don't really know too much about it, so I guess I'm just going to go ahead and pass it over to Eric to kind of outline the show. All right. Well, I mean, you know, the big news, Oklahoma and Texas are go- going to leave the Big 12, and so dropping them down to eight teams, and then uh, they're going to join the SEC. I think the details and the timing are kind of hazy, but... Um, I was talking to Norm the other day, and he thought it'd be a good idea to kind of uh, kind of talk through things, um, see where things are heading. Uh, I, I I think aside from like the the people inside the SEC and you know ESPN and whatnot, you know, as fans, we're probably just speculating, but I think that's what makes it a lot of fun. So um, just trying to read the tea leaves based on the little bits of information and facts that are out there. So, um, you know, with that being said, do do you think the Big 12 is going to continue to exist? Or do you think that um, they're going to go away? Well, uh, Oklahoma and Texas have obviously given their divorce papers to the Big 12. And the remaining members, I think, as a group, they would like to stay together until the end of their current contract with the uh the networks so that they can get the penalty uh money from OU and Texas but individually each university is going to try to do whatever is best for them you don't want to be the last one standing in a group of five conference uh when really the movers and shakers are moving forward with you know these super conferences So as a whole, I think they would like to stay together. Uh, But, you know, as soon as one, let's say West Virginia, they will crawl on hands and knees over broken glass to get into the ACC again. And once that happens, you lose that uh, unity. And I think it's every man for himself. So I think I think the Big 12 is history. But then again, I thought that before. But the only thing that saved it in the past was Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah. And and I think that's what happened, you know, being, I'm wearing my Cincinnati hat. Uh, So this reminds me a little bit about, uh, a little bit like what happened to the Big East um, when they split up and and basically stopped being a football conference. Because I I think technically, right, um, the Big East conference uh, the, the the people that stayed in the conference are actually in the American conference now, and then they received a, a buyout from um, the schools that left the Big East to join. Um, I guess mostly the ACC, right? Um, yeah, if you re- if you remember, uh, they had uh, TCU and Boise State lined up to join the Big East, right? And right about that time was going to happen that the, I think it was Louisville and Pittsburgh and maybe Syracuse jumped to the ACC. Right. And once that happened, you know, uh, TCU backed out and then the Big 12 grabbed them. Right. And then that was pretty much the end of the Big East. And I kind of think that's what's going to happen to the Big 12. But, but the Big East the remaining teams did stay together long enough to, to get that penalty money. Right. So that that's kind of what held the remaining teams together was that they all agreed to to share, but, but the money isn't, isn't the same, right? Like what's the, what's like the amount that Texas and Oklahoma are going to have to pay. Wasn't it like, I want to say it was like 30 ish each, or is it 40 each that they had to pay as a penalty? if They leave early. Something like that. It's. I think it's. I think each team's cut is in the Big Twelve is about thirty-five to forty mm-hmm. million. Right. Yeah. I'm sure the chart so. now. So, yeah, but how many years do they have left? Uh, it's supposed to end in 2025. So, if you look at the curve, I mean this this is uh, this is this was published, I think, by Stu Mandel on his Twitter uh, in June. So, I mean, <laughs> see, something from June is already outdated, but that's what this jump is. Like the projection of this is how much more money they're going to be able to get. 
I guess my question is sign their new deal. Do they have to leave early? I mean, it's just a few years. Couldn't they just wait it out? Um, I think the rumor was that they were going to join the SEC like starting in 2025. So technically, they wouldn't have to pay the penalty. But then there's all there. There are rumors that, and you know, so I think that's what this. Um, so let me switch. So basically, uh, the Big Twelve commissioner sent ESPN a letter basically telling them to, to stop meddling in their conference. And they, they cite this agreement, uh, clause in their agreement that says that, you know, ESPN agreed not to take any actions that are likely to impair or that are inconsistent with the rights the conference has acquired under the agreement. Uh, and then the rumor is that um, ESPN's trying to, in, in the American conference of all people, are trying to get, um, two or three teams that are already in the big 12 to jump to the American. Um, so, and if you look right, the American, if, if we go back to our, our money per year chart, right? So right now the big 12 members are looking right around 40 million a year. Uh, and the Americans has a deal that goes until 2031, 32, uh, where each team gets 7 million a year. So, I don't know how much sense that makes. <laughs> if if you're, you know, like if you can hold out and hold together, you, you got like 40 million. But I wonder if maybe um, reading between the lines, right, w that would imply that maybe ESPN would do something with the Americans deal to increase the amount paid, you know. But I mean, if you think about it, right? So you move Texas. So ESPN has SEC, right? They're paying forty-five million ish a team for the SEC. So you add Texas and Oklahoma, and give them both a you know six million dollar a year raise, right? But then you have them locked up until like twenty thirty or whatever. Um, and then the rest of the Big 12, maybe you try to knock them down to what the Americans paying, or maybe you don't even take the rest. You take like uh, a few of them and you knock them down to some somewhere between 40 and seven and, and you come out ahead, right? Because you get, you get the, the cream of the crop from the Big 12, you get their games, Texas and Oklahoma, and you pay a little bit more for them, but then you don't have to pay for, you know, you don't have to pay full price for like Kansas and um, Kansas State and Texas Tech and them. Maybe you can get them for cheaper. So I, that's that's what I was reading into all this. I don't know uh, if you guys think that makes any sense or not. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not too familiar of. Uh, I, I just heard about I guess Texas and Oklahoma, but then when I started looking into it, people are speculating that it's going to cause basically a domino effect, but um, I'm not sure if that's really a good thing for college football or not. Yeah, uh, as as fans, or at least half of us, it'll be exciting and interesting, and then for the other half, you're going to feel like the have-nots. Right. Uh, it's the same thing we're experienced with the Bearcats, you know, the last four or five years. They're competitive, but they're not equals, and they're treated as not equals with the rest of the college football world. I think this might even go beyond that. The SEC is not going to take any more of these Big 12 teams. Um, and I'm not sure any conference will at this point, with the exception of maybe the ACC and the, the Pac-12. But, uh, you know, this, this could go beyond this uh, college football realignment. This could be a power play by, um, let's just say, the SEC and others to – get rid of the NCAA as a ruling body for football. I mean, let's face it, the NCAA is pretty pretty toothless as it is when it comes to football, and I think this this might be the end of them. Hmm. That would be interesting. Because, I mean, if, if they can consolidate and just take the cream of the crop and create these mega leagues, right? Essentially, it's just the minor leagues for the NFL. Because that's kind of how I see with, like, the top teams now i mean like if you're a premier player on a really good team you're it's like a lock that you make it into the nfl sure you get three 20 team uh super 
uh, conferences and they, they elect a commissioner and it would be very much like the NFL model. You have a commissioner and a body that answers to him that oversees rules and, and uh, regulations and all that based on how the conferences want their system to be run. It's, it's, it's possible. It could be down the road quite a ways, but maybe not. But do you think the NFL will allow that? Because wouldn't that have potential to may possibly be bigger than the NFL? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I think they're pretty happy. Um, you know, they have a free minor league system right now, right. basically. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think they would have a problem with it one way or the other. No, I don't. I don't think so. I, I, I mean, it, it also gets into kind of the, the money that the players can make from the name, image, and likeness stuff. Where, yeah. even well, let me ask you. you uh, I, I was, I was, yeah, I was go just going to ask Josh. Uh, you know, does he have? What does he see? Uh, let's just use uh, the Bearcats, Cincinnati. What do you think they're? best interests are in the near term uh, with all this conference realignment stuff. I think if they did consolidate, they they would make the cut. They would be on the lower end. So they, they would probably be on one of the weaker uh, conferences or whatever you would call it. Uh, but I, I think they would make a cut. But I think overall for the, the grand spectrum, it would kind of suck because I think what makes college football college football is that there's always that possible underdog that could possibly make it when you create these mega leagues, you pretty much eliminate that. And, you know, so that that would be my only argument against it. But, I mean, I'm all for the best of the best because um, I, I want – if there's a premier league, that's, that's only going to make the NFL better um, in, my, in my mind. But um, that, that would be the one thing I would miss. But I think for Cincinnati, I think they would make the cut some, one way or another because, I mean, Cincinnati or Ohio in general is a really big football um, state. So – um, I, I, I think, I don't know, in the grand scheme of things, it would be bad, but as a Cincinnati fan, I don't think it would be, I think we would be okay, but it would be interesting. I just feel like, you know, like, so the SEC networks with ESPN, the AAC signed with ESPN, and then the ACC is with ESPN, right? And the Big Ten has their own network, and the Pac-12 has their own network. Well, really, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, and even the Big Ten, their primary uh, media provider was Fox, and don't right. and Fox is going to be a big mover and shaker on whatever happens in the future. Um, right. Well, except right, so you got like Fox with their their networks, right, and then right. ESPN basically controls the other or is part right. of the other four leagues, right? So they're with SEC. Big 12, ACC, and um, the American, right? So they have three leagues, right? So basically, it seems like they're consolidating, right? They would or, like to. They, yeah. have, they have four leagues, right? And they're consolidating, right? So the Big 12, so ACC, SEC, and the American are locked up for like a decade, right? Big 12, they have to renegotiate in five years, unless the big 12 goes under, right? So it seems like maybe looking at it from ESPN's angle, right? Wouldn't it be the be in their best interest to uh, kind of try to make each of the products that they have locked up for the next 10 years fit, you know, the way they want it, right? So maybe they move around a little bit in the ACC, you know, so they, they, Basically, you take the Big 12, you've taken the two best teams, you move them to the SEC. So that's kind of like your premier league. Uh, and then maybe you move your middle tier teams to the ACC. And then the, the remaining ones that you care about, you move to the American. Um, and then whoever else is left, who cares? Um, and then maybe the American gets a little bit more money, but probably not what the ACC has, right? Because I, I just feel like if, if you're going to talk a, a team into joining the American, there has to be more money in the American than the 40, 
right? Exactly. Because like, yeah. wouldn't you just wouldn't you try to go like the geographically, right? For the Big Twelve, um, you know, obviously the the SEC works, but you know they've already taken who they wanted. So geographically, you know, you look at the Big Ten or the Pac twelve, it's kind of like the the nearest match, except for West Virginia, right? They're closer to the ACC. Um, so maybe maybe it just gets split among those conferences, and then you know the American angle obviously is more interesting to me because I I'm Bearcats guy, but you know, I, this I is the, the yeah this is the Americans' chance if they can actually step up and take some of these, uh, particularly the you know let's say Oklahoma State. Texas Tech, Baylor, Kansas, Kansas State. That would that would be a coup uh, for the American. And I think you know you're no longer a group of five, if you will. You're a, you're you're up in the power conference level at least. Yeah. Um, so the big wild card right now really is um, Notre Dame. You know, do they stay independent? Uh, I know the the Big Ten and the ACC would love to have them, but I don't. I think uh, Notre Dame's in a position where they can just kind of wait and see what happens in the future. I feel like the Big Ten would make the most sense, right? Because if Texas and Oklahoma goes to SEC, I feel like they would really, really want them at that point. Well, I think. I, I mean, everybody wants Notre Dame in their conference, right? Football, but I mean, but I I I heard somebody say today on the radio. Or, or no, I guess I was listening to um, one of the athletic podcasts. Um, and I think they mentioned something about uh, if Notre Dame joins a con- conference, they're contractually obligated to join the uh, ACC because that's where all the rest of their schools are. Or I'm sorry, sports are are right now. So it's sort of like if they join, they have to go to the ACC. I don't know how long that runs, and I don't. I, mean, I didn't. I'm you know, repeating I've, something else I've heard, but yeah. I, you know, I mean, I, I, it's going to be interesting because I mean, the, the Pac-12 has more money to offer than the American for sure, and you know, you, I wonder if some of the better brands are going to. I, I guess in the, a the roundabout way, are, the conferences aren't going to provide any money. It's all coming from these uh, television contracts and streaming contracts in the future. Right, right. But they're able to offer more. That's true. Yeah. Well, it's weird, though, right? Because I've read on uh, OutKick that uh, the SEC added a clause into their contract with ESPN that said that if they added teams, that their pay, the money that the network paid them would go up proportional to the number of teams they added they just had to add a team you know at least as good as oklahoma right so they add oklahoma and texas now their revenue goes up and and every school is made whole right whereas i don't know what happens with like the big 10 and the pac-12 like you know if they they're running i think basically well i don't i don't know exactly how their dollars work but it's, I'm not certain that if they added teams, that their per team payout wouldn't go down, you know? So, like, say if they added Oklahoma State, instead of getting, you know, 50-something million in 2021, maybe each team only gets 40-something million. Right? Uh, they, so, that's why they usually tie these in with uh, re- renegotiated deals with the network partners. Yeah, and you're yeah, right, and, and like, like from the American standpoint, right, they're locked in for twelve years. But then again, if ESPN wanted to park a park a few uh, good Big Twelve teams into the league, they, I'm sure the American would gladly do that for a little bit more money, right? Yeah, I, I also saw that the like the Big Twelve, for instance, there's a clause with their contract. Who knows uh, that if they lose teams, they lose money. And if they particularly lose Oklahoma or Texas, they lose even more money from the networks. So really, so this is kind of something that's been planned for a bit, huh? Uh, yeah, it's 
Sounds like it. I mean, I think this has been going on for at least a minimum of six months. Um, supposedly, Oklahoma and Texas decided to group together, and they've reached out to not only the SEC, but also the Big Ten uh, six months ago. But, uh, you know, the, supposedly the Big Ten was like, we'll take Texas with Oklahoma in arms, but Oklahoma, no, because of the uh, AU membership. Uh, Oh, really? That the Big Ten has with all its members, except for currently Nebraska, which is trying to get AU certified again. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah. Contracts are made to be broken, though, right? Uh, <laughs> renegotiated. <laughs> it's, it's whoever, yeah, it's whoever has the best lawyers uh, will win this fight at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, unless the Big 12 just ceases to exist. So, right. so what do you think is going to happen? What, what's your prediction? Which, uh, which one of us? Both. I'll, I'll go first. You go I'm first. Yeah. I, I think that I think that the Big Twelve goes away, and the the teams get divvied up by ESPN into the the other leagues that they have long term contracts with, and then. Uh, so you think there's going to the be four major be leagues? The, um or conferences or whatever you want to call it. I think it's still I think it's still I mean I think it's yeah I think it's going to be the the power four and then the Americans going to be instead of power 6 they'll be power 5 but it'll still be a discount league relative to like the ACC I I don't see them getting up to I mean I don't really know but to me, it seems like to make all the money work, you have to knock down how much you're paying some of the Big 12 teams. So I could see a little bit more money going to the American, but not as much as the ACC. Otherwise, they would just move the teams that they want into the ACC. It seems to be like a very uh, measured kind of uh, plan that they have going on. Yeah, I think. I think for the near term, you know, the first reaction is, oh, my God, we got to make a move to counter what just happened. But really, I think uh, because of the stability in the other leagues that you're going to see kind of a, a waiting out period. But then, you know, either the, the American, I think, will be aggressive trying to get up, uh, pick up some scraps from the Big 12. And I think you'll see some Big 12 members get opportunities with the ACC and the Pac-12 and jump. And that will start a domino effect to uh, get rid of the Big 12. I also think maybe uh, you're going to see the Big 10 uh, either work up a, a media rights partnership with the Pac-12. Perhaps, you know, they get a bid together for a TV contract and, uh, you know, they have exclusive games between each other. Or you're going to see the Big Ten uh, really go after USC and Oregon. And Colorado is a very attractive, even though, you know, they haven't been really good for a long time. Um, you know, that's a growing state, a huge market. Um, and the, it's a great school. It's an AAU member as well. So I think the I think the Big Ten is either going to do some kind of partnership with the Pac-12, or they're actually gonna you're gonna see some prominent Big Twelve uh, Pac-12 teams potentially end up in the Big Ten, which sounds crazy. But remember, geography has nothing to do with <laughs> college football anymore. It's all how many streaming devices you have and how many alumni you have and what your contracts are for television rights. Well, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's just whatever makes the most money is what's going to happen. So, I mean, I think probably the networks know mo more than anyone, right? Cause they're the ones that are paying out. So it, yeah, but I guess right now, I guess it is, it is going to be a holding out period because we, I, I don't know how, like what the contracts are and I'm sure they're all at different periods, but it, it, it seems like it is going to be like a domino effect. I mean, you're just going to have to compete one way or another. So 
Yeah. There's de it definitely looks like it's going to consolidate, though. I think so. Because, I, I mean, because I think that the ESPN actively killed the, the um, Big East. Like, I think they went out of their way to kill it to get to make it cheaper to pay for those teams, right? But now they're under contract, so now you're only paying $7 million a year. You could park whoever you want there for $7 million a year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah we shall see. I agree.